Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we're back again with episode 4 out of 5 where we are grading all champions of 2019. So we have went uh, through basically worst of the worst, through somewhat meh, to actually average jaw decent champions. And now we're left with a creme de la creme pretty much because this realistically has been a fantastic year uh, when it comes to new champions being added to the contest. And we have many, many great additions and even spots number 20 and so on were already quite all right kind of champions. And now when it comes to top 10, all of these are insanely useful, great champions with definite places in their endgame and I want to take away nothing from them. So let me make it clear, all of these champions are fantastic, uh, many of them are separated by split hair. Also it is my personal opinion, it's alright if you have a different one, but this is how I feel about these champions currently and obviously uh, my opinion of them largely is formed whether I have a lot of kind of encounters or whether I have been using these champions or not, who I have, who I don't have, so I might be missing some spots about. But that being said, let's jump in to spot number 10. And spot number 10, we're gonna start off with a tech champion. And no, it's not gonna be Warlock. It's gonna be, where is that maxed out Gilly? It's gonna be Guillotine 2099. Now I know many of you would like to play this champion a lot higher, but I still have a fair amount of reservations towards her. Now I have taken her to rank 5 myself because obviously I do see a large potential value of her in future in Abyss or some other extensive content. But at the same time, currently in the game, she can do a lot of things, but she's hardly ever like the best option for pretty much anything outside of like maybe a couple of parts in 6.2 and 3. And here is the problem. You are being forced to finish every fight with the level 3. That is often confusing and difficult and you feel kind of insecure. And whenever you do enter a fight with Guillotine in 2099, you do not only have to be concerned about never ever losing your combo, because as soon as you do, you go back to zero and you have to start building her up all over again. And while she is under one hit, uh, 100 hits, she actually doesn't hit hard at all. And so even if you started the fight with 100 hits and you do well, you land 20 hits and then you get tagged and then all of her damage output is just poof, it disappears. So there's always quite a bit of worries. You kind of have to be on your toes. Obviously, yes, there are safety mechanisms. You can use Quake and Nick Fury Synergy. Her signature ability can help your heavy attacks, let you stack up to combo shield charges, so on and so forth. So there are ways kind of how to gain this extra security or reinforce her. However, at the same time, she still feels like a fairly finicky champion to play with and for instance from my limited experience uh, playing with her you're always kind of on your toes it's kind of like playing and sitting on the knives because you're feeling uneasy what if they tug you once what if you miss uh dex some special attack with projectiles and they just clip you or something so there is uh that worry in back of my head and therefore i don't think she's particularly overly enjoyable champion from kind of day-to-day -day fighting the fact that you have to finish the fight at level 3 is definitely quite bothersome as well. But that being said, that put away, she's a fantastic, absolutely insane damage machine. She actually has quite decent power control and you can basically endlessly keep striking opponents without a need to bait out a special attack. Now her level 2 has some heal reversal which definitely can have its uses as well. It was like pre-fight abilities, guaranteed crits and you can make so that all your level 2 crit so and so forth. So there's quite a bit and she's also sustainable because she has lifesteal basically. Uh, addition to that, she's bleed and poison immune, so there's a lot of good things going for her. And also one thing to note is basically arrival of this champion made crossbones absolutely mutant irrelevant because the one thing that people kind of praised Crossbones on was the fact that he never crits and he can bypass spiked armor and Mr. Sinisters and some other things. Well then, Guillotine essentially is 97 times better champion that also doesn't crit. Therefore, as soon as she entered the contest, if you get her, you can pretty much toss that Crossbones in the bin and she is your new Crossbones in the sense that uh, this is a champion that doesn't crit and does so much more now though. 
And yes, so guilty number, uh, guilty in 2099, number 10. We're gonna move on to spot number nine. And spot number nine is a champion that I absolutely love playing with. And uh, I have limited experience with him and I might place him somewhere up higher in this list, but it's Sunspot now. Sunspot does have several really kind of cool qualities. The fact that he siphons the power quicker by getting back the incinerates is cool. That makes the fights faster and it's like an Passive power gain, so that's a way how to bypass some of the active power gain restriction nodes. It's also quite interesting, and he's definitely good for stuff like a power shield and some other things. Now, those perfect parries is the main reason why this guy's up that high. Perfect parries and high damage output makes him a fantastic champion for high end content where the fights are basic and simple and where you do not require overly large amount of utility. Utility being this guy's main problem, however, because he doesn't really have all that much going in that department. Basically, uh, everything that describes this champion is uh, perfect parries and blocks, huge damage output, lots of debuffs on the opponent. Uh, and if you want to add the fourth one, then that would be extra power gain. And there you go, that's Sunspot. It's kind of a very simple recipe, but it's at the same time very enjoyable recipe. It's a very fun recipe. And he's definitely one of those champions that you want to play more with. One of those champions where you want to bring in the quest and do fight after fight after fight, because uh, it's just fun. And outside of just being fun, uh, that perfect block thing actually makes him extremely kind of like tanky for a lot of endgame scenarios where in 6.3 opponents have 10k or 20k attack and this guy can just take them on chin like a professional and that's awesome there aren't too many champions in game who can do that and if you are fairly kind of doubtful in your own skill level and intercepts and things like that then sunspot is a fairly uh good alternative to it because you can basically ignore a lot of chip damage and uh, even on like a 20% revive or 40% revive without needing to invest many potions in this guy he can take you quite far in the quest and I like him for that and obviously there's definitely a really nice correlation with despair mastery you being basically able to shut down healing additionally to that we see nodes and stuff like freezer burn or uh, do you burn or pleasure to burn yes pleasure to burn uh, that kind of stuff more and more so he kind of manages to sneak in with these little attributes that he have also in endgame content and I think uh, perhaps eventually he might go up higher in the list but currently I'm perfectly candid with where he is and he's at spot number nine and that uh, will lead us to spot number eight and spot number eight also belongs to a mutant champion and that is going to be where is that guy? Havoc. Now, Havoc is not only a fantastic defender, he's actually a very versatile attacker. The one thing that everybody knows about Havoc is that he has insane level 3 damage, which is true. But there are many different ways how you can use Havoc and basically also benefit from his basic mechanics, from the fact that he does energy damage, from the fact that his basic hits can be projectiles. Uh, you can also play him in a similar fashion to Omega Red, because once opponent has quite a lot of plasma charges on him, Havoc is capable of dealing a lot of damage over time. In addition, synergy with Wasp is absolutely fantastic and insane, and every time you parry opponent, you place an additional plasma charge, therefore you get to build up a lot quicker. Plus, more and more nodes in endgame scenarios kind of do energy damage to you or place energy damage passives on you and Havoc thrives on that and yes he's not immune to that damage even though he has huge energy resistance and he can last longer while taking damage over time but at the same time that basically supercharges Havoc and he gets all of this extra uh, just uh, damage output and the fights seem so much quicker. So Havoc on the counter to Sunspot is not really the champion you want to bring in in every fight because he's not really the quickest fight finisher. Typically you will want uh, to spend some time either building up your prowess charges or getting to level 3 or at least a level 2 and some heavy attacks in between so and so forth. So he's not a sprint runner uh, but he is a great marathon player and the fact that that level 3 delivers such a huge burst damage it also enables him to bypass stuff like things protection and many other things the fact that uh, he 
does have non-contact energy attacks, lets him bypass a lot of electro damage, Korgs, and there are just many absolutely fantastic matchups for this guy, obviously he's also incinerate immune, and all in all, uh, this guy is only not just a defensive nightmare, he's also kind of like really interesting and versatile utility attacker i would say he's not the shiniest gem which is kind of ironic because well you know plasma whatever uh in a sense that he will hardly ever be the first thing that you think about as a potential solution to a problem but he can solve many problems because plasmas in fact do count as debuffs they also interact with uh despair mastery so you can shut down opponents heal at the same time you can deliver massive amounts of burst damage your non-contact attacks, so on and so forth. There's just quite a lot going on with this guy, and it's uh, definitely enjoyable. And therefore, I personally place him a spot above Sunspot currently. That might change, as well, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, but uh, I definitely do appreciate this guy's value and what he does in contest. And now that we are done with Havoc, we have to move over to spot number 7. So we have two champions left on today's list before we get to the top 5. Uh, however, before that, we need to look at the champions who barely missed the mark for top 5. And first champion like that is going to be Black Widow Clairvoyant. Now, if I would have to describe Black Widow Clairvoyant in a couple of words, then uh, she is essentially utility powerhouse there are so many immunities so many different effects abilities hidden inside her and there are many different ways how you can play her and it's really creative uh, way of building a character and also approaching the fight for the most part uh, but let's try and break her down she can be either Bleed immune, poison immune, or incinerate immune. That does give her immediately a lot of kind of range and versatility where she can actually enter in the fights where you are required to have certain immunity. That also basically makes her pretty much immediately extremely suicide friendly because you can switch in between these immunities extremely easily. So you're gonna start the fight bleed immune, next you're gonna go poison immune, and that's it. Uh, suicide debuffs are gone. You're never gonna see them again, and that is fantastic. Also, she has massive heal on level two if you are uh, in your bleed curse phase, and that heal is one of the better heals in the game currently. It is dependent on what kind of damage you do, so it also really works well with Suicide Masteries because Suicide Masteries lets you do more damage and in return you heal more and in return you cover the recall damage easier and easier. So she's definitely one of those mystics that I would like to say is not even uh, suicide friendly, she's somewhat suicide dependent because unfortunately even though having one of the higher base attacks in the game she really doesn't have all that much uh, damage power and that is probably the reason why she didn't make the top 5 list because her damage, uh, or lack thereof, kind of somewhat also offsets a bit of utilities. Because, for instance, let's take healing, for example. She isn't a champion uh, that will finish out the fight as quick as Sunspot, let's say, right? And that means you typically end up taking a lot more cheap damage. And the, yes, the healing covers for it perfectly fine. But that healing also could have been kind of irrelevant if you can finish out the fight in the manner that Sunspot can with basically a couple of heavy attacks level 1 and level 2 and done and therefore he just ends up not taking any damage in the first place therefore he has no need to heal uh, so there are many kind of things like that about clairvoyant that uh, somewhat negate uh, all of that awesome toolkit that she has uh, because of the extended and drawn out fights like her level 2 has power control which drains more power the more power opponents already have and there is again the same argument if you can find a champion that can uh, finish out the fights fast there might not have been a need for the power control to begin with let's say if you're taking ghost chorus or mega red whilst you do how to power control opponent with black widow clairvoyant uh omega red or ghost could have potentially finished those fights already before the opponents reach the 30 bars of power or something like that so there are those aspects which kind of slow her down a bit in my opinion, but at the same time she's a fantastic champion, she has amazing toolkit, her damage isn't also 
bad on level 2 if you are on incinerate phase, but then you kind of forfeit the heal and the power control. So you kind of have to switch and choose uh, and to kind of like play her to uh, optimal kind of like needs, I guess, in the fight. But at the same time, she can do so much that there is no way anybody should or could disrespect her ability to be a useful kind of glue for your roster whenever whichever area you are lacking. There is a quite good chance that Black Widow Claire Warren has a decent answer for that. And overall, she is uh, on a short list of one of the champions I want to take to rank 5 myself, because I think she can still cover for some things I might not otherwise be able to deal with so well. And yeah, I think she's amazing, I think she's fantastic, and I think she would work in pretty much everyone's roster. And that uh, will leave us with the final champion. But spot number 6, basically the champion that nearly made it to the top 5. And uh, no, ma no matter how I present this, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of grief stick, uh, a stick and a lot of uh, disagreeing uh, in comment section for not rating this champion any higher. Even though I love her, and it's her, even though I think she's extremely fun, even though there's so much she can do. It's Captain Marvel movie version. Now, she's fantastic. There's no other way to put it. The damage can be crazy good, the binary, the indestructibility, the stuns for days, the armor breaks, the immunity, so on and so forth. And it's a very kind of simple base mechanic where you get this, if she's maxing 12 second indestructible, but that indestructible means so much. It's such a vital ability. It lets you enter damage over time fights, it lets you tank special attacks if you have to, it lets you do so many different things and even without that her pure damage and like poison immunity, ability to shrug off all debuffs and when you enter binary, her uh, ability to close out fights pretty much immediately because you start with a quite high amount of power, you basically do a couple of parries, couple of combos, drop level 2 Opponents guaranteed to be stunned and you can basically deal 100-200k damage in that one short burst quite easily and reliably. She is an absolute AQ powerhouse, she's a questing powerhouse and as soon as you basically get to your first binary phase she can blitz through quests like it's nothing. She is one of the more enjoyable champions to play, but obviously there are some downsides to her. I'm not even gonna particularly mention her weakness to the mystic champions and the fact that she loses health whenever she builds charges against mystic champions because I don't think it's a massive thing. It hasn't been inconvenient that many times and it's only kind of important typically for the first fight or if you haven't carried over many binary charges and you have a lot to make up because you can use her against mystics quite easily, you can enter a fight and if you only need a couple of parries, yes you're gonna take slight amount of damage, but then you're gonna go indestructible and then you're not gonna care because you're likely gonna kill them quickly anyways. The biggest problem she has, however, is limber, stun immunity, champions that uh, can't uh, be stunned or can shrug it off and anything that distracts her from basically keeping opponents stunned because uh, that is a really large part of her gameplay that extra added opening that extra damage you can put in after her level 2 that stun you get when you counter opponents heavy attack with your own heavy attack it's massive it's vital for maintaining her in binary phase and that is a massive weakness for the champion and unfortunately she's also quite dependent in many situations on Nick Fury's energy. Now, I have said in the past that if the opponent health pulls and big, if she's basically able to finish out the fight with like one level two and a couple of hits, then you don't need Nick Fury's energy. And that is still the case, because you don't, realistically. Because uh, it might mean that you just have to parry a couple of more times at the beginning of every fight. But as soon as you enter more difficult scenarios, more longer fights, maybe not so easy, not non-standard fights, uh, where not everything goes exactly your way and can be finished within 15 seconds, then you do feel the need for Nick Fury synergy 100%. You can't escape it. Uh, you just lose your binary charges too quickly. So those are kind of like the two biggest weaknesses of the champion. 
but I still absolutely love her. <laughs> She's really fun. Uh, Rhythmic Fury combined, they're kind of like pretty much like the power duo this year, I would say, because Nick Fury can deliver some insane damage, so can she, and they can build insane synergy team around. And uh, I have absolutely zero regrets using my generic Awakening Gem on her, and she has definitely served me well. Perhaps I found her a bit lacking in somewhere in 6.3, and that's largely because of health pulls, because she's one of those burst champions who, where you get the maximum amount of value out of if your initial, your first burst is enough, kind of like Chorus in a sense. Uh, that's not to say that you can't use her in longer fights, same like you can use Chorus in longer fights, you're just gonna have to wait for the charge to refresh. And here as well, you're just gonna have to play differently, maybe a bit more economical, you're gonna have to have a bit different style. Uh, but any fight where she can finish with kind of like her initial burst damage is crazy good and crazy fun. And yeah, so that will pretty much do for today's list. It leaves us with five champions, uh, which we are going to review and place uh, in next video. So stay tuned for that. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video though. If you did, hit that like button, hit that sub button, hit all the buttons, and I'm gonna catch you guys soon. See ya!